Another graph question means I'm going to first think about the accuracy of the choices before I start to think about the, how they're relevant, right? They do need to support the researcher's hypothesis, but I would really like to see if they are actually supported by the table before I pick them. So choice A, the Alaska marmots arousal episodes, so that's uh, this first column here, or middle column I should say, uh, lasted for days. So Alaska marmots arousal episodes last for days, no, 21.2 hours is not more than a day, so this is just false, not true. The Alaska marmots and the Arctic ground squirrels both maintained torpor for several consecutive days per bout on average. So okay, both of these things, torpor, several consecutive days, 13, 16.7, yeah, that seems, that seems true. So I don't know if it's right, maybe there's multiple true answers, so we gotta move on. Uh, the Alaska marmots had shorter torpor bouts, is that true? Alaska marmots, shorter torpors, so that's 13.81 versus 16.77, so that part's true. Uh, and longer arousal episodes, that's also true, 21.2 to 14.2, uh, so that's also a true answer. The Alaska marmots had more torpor bouts, uh, that is true, 12 to 10.5. Um, oh, 12 then arousal episodes, so 12 to 11, that's true. Um, but their arousal episodes were much shorter than their torpor bouts. Well, yes, arousal episodes were 21.2 days or hours, and uh, the days, it's days for the, uh, the torpor. So arousal, definitely shorter. So three answer choices are true. I don't know, was that a successful strategy there? Well, I got rid of one. Now we have to see they're true, but are they relevant to the hypothesis? Are they going to support their hypothesis? What is it? When hibernating Alaska marmots and Arctic ground squirrels enter a state called torpor, which minimizes the energy their bodies need to function. So um, I might write this, torpor equals low energy, uh, which minimizes, okay, often a hibernating animal will temporarily come out of torpor, called an arousal episode, and its met metabolic rate will rise, burning more of the press's energy. So arousal equals high energy. Alaska marmots hibernate in groups and therefore burn less energy, keeping warm during these episodes than they would if they were alone. So the marmots are in groups. Okay, maybe I put that here, groups. Um, a researcher hypothesized that because Arctic ground squirrels hibernate alone, um, they would likely exhibit longer bouts of torpor and shorter arousal episodes than Alaska marmots. So they're saying the squirrel has more torpor and less arousal. Is that true? So more torpor, yeah, longer, longer, right? They're 16.77 and less arousal, yep, 14.2. So that, that checks, that checks out. So we need something that talks about those two things. So choice B, the Alaska marmots and the Arctic ground squirrels both maintain torpor for several consecutive days per bout. Well, this is saying that they're the same, right? That word both is a, is a same word. But we're trying to suggest in this hypothesis that these two animals are different in some way. So it's unlikely that we would want a choice that says they're, that they're similar. So this is just not going to do the job. Choice C, the Alaska marmots had shorter torpor bouts and longer arousal episodes than the Arctic ground squirrels did. Okay, gonna need a second on that one. Let's look at D. The Alaska marmots had more torpor bouts than arousal episodes, but their arousal episodes were much shorter than their torpor bouts. So right now I'm leaning towards C, even though I don't fully understand it yet, because it's, it's about both of them. It's comparing them and it's saying that they're different. The marmots had shorter bouts and longer arousals than the Arctic ground squirrels. So they're comparing them in a way that shows a difference. That's the point of the hypothesis, is to say that these two animals have a difference because of one hibernates in groups, one hibernates alone. So just for that reason, even if I was confused, I might go with C because it's the only one that's kind of comparative. But we can prove it using arrows, my favorite thing. So what did they say about the squirrel? The squirrel is going to have high torpor and low arousal. So marmots then should have the opposite low torpor, and high arousal. So what does it say in choice C? The marmot had shorter torpor, so check, right? And longer arousal, longer arousal, than the Arctic ground squirrel. So it checks. Now look at the, what the SAT did here. The lines gave us something about the squirrel. But the question was flipping it. 
and talking about the marmot. But it doesn't take a scientist to understand that if we're talking about the different things, the arrows are gonna go in the different directions, right? So I didn't have to think too hard about this. They're showing that there's a contrast. So I just contrast it up with down, right? And maybe it takes a little bit of a leap of faith, but I think we're seeing on this digital test that there's a lot of questions that involve these kind of flips where the, the SAT is giving you one like version of the trend and your job for the question is to think about what happens if we reversed it, right? What if we went in the opposite direction? And so here it's squirrels and marmots, but it's, it's kind of the same thing. We're just taking a different perspective on the same hypothesis, idea, data, whatever you want to call it. Hopefully this makes sense to you because it's the only way that I can make sense of all this stuff about bouts and arousals and all that stuff. Um, it's, it's complicated, but arrows simplify it.